I haven't put many videos up about this or any videos yet because I have got some footage, but it's been a, a real learning curve for me because I've never done anything like this before. So this is the, um, the gearbox and overdrive unit from the Stag. And I uh, stripped both of them down, um, took the top off the gearbox, had a look inside. There wasn't any oil in it because I think it had been uh, drained previously, but it hadn't been used like that. So the gears all look fine, but I wanted to check everything and go through everything thoroughly. Um, the overdrive was full of shite uh it was pretty gummed up and i think it was um the o-rings on the pistons the two pistons had uh, totally uh, degraded so um it was a good job i did strip it down but <clears throat> um you know this was a bit of a uh, a learning curve for me <clears throat> whilst i kind of get the theory of it i've never actually attempted to rebuild a gearbox um but i had some help um so youtube ellen yakov uh great channel uh richard at churchill uh, church house classics sorry um was there to give me advice when any i had any questions uh thank you richard thank you ellen um the rom helps but is pretty uh reliant i think uh, that you've been trained <laughs> back in the 70s on all this stuff so what i've done and the reason i've got you on handheld is because i need to be able to sort of show you what i've done so basically i strip the gearbox down remove the top cover um, remove the overdrive off the back um, there'll be some video footage of this anyway but um, again each step of the way I was kind of feeling my way through it got everything out of the gearbox um, then I started to check some of the um, uh, some of the uh, the shimming and the, the end flow on the counter shaft so that needed adjusting um, so I have fitted a spacer which I've got some video of which I'll um, I'll include uh, which will already be up probably by the time this goes up so um, so yeah so uh, I had to um, sort out the end float on the counter shaft also there was too much end float uh, too much um, uh, too much of a gap on one side of the, the main shaft so you sort of measure the the bushes that go through the gears um, and make sure that they uh, are correct and that the, 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 there's not too much em uh, uh, too much float on those and I had to buy a slightly bigger shim um, to increase that uh, slightly because there was about 12 foul when there should have been about 7 um, or maybe more than that actually I think 15 thou. Um so anyway that's all been done um, to get the overdrive I stripped it down bought a seal kit completely replaced all the o-rings um, pulled everything apart cleaned it uh, put it all back together again um, I had to replace the cone clutch because that had deteriorated and by getting it out I managed to do some more damage to it so I just thought I'd better replace that uh, so I put a new one of those in um, again just checked everything went back together properly as it should do um, there's a very good video on the Ellen Yakov channel for that he does a complete J-type overhaul um, which is brilliant. The solenoid was jammed, so I had to, um, so I had to, to to get the solenoid out. I then removed the piston from inside and sprayed loads of brake cleaner inside that and got it all cleaned out. They tend to fill up with oil, so if they're then left, they gum up. Um, and that's what happened to mine. It wasn't moving; it was just sparking when I put the uh, contacts on it. So, um, yeah. So basically, that's where I am. I'm at now. Obviously, with having done all this work. I had no idea whether I'd done it right. I didn't know whether it was going to work when I put it in the car and I didn't want to risk putting it all back in the car without at least trying to see how things went, especially with the overdrive. So I bought this gauge, which I ordered from a guy in the US, um, uh, Whole Camp, I think it is. Anyway, it's the right gauge with the right adapter for this fitting. They're not easy to find. Uh, goes up to 600 PSI and you're looking for around 500 with the stag. Um, and the idea of this is to show when you engage the overdrive that the pressure increases around to 500 quite quickly and when you disengage it it drops off quite quickly um, because that means the overdrive should operate as it's designed uh, and work smoothly and, 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 and not sort of drag or to work slowly so I bought on eBay for 35 quid this was brand new uh, single phase and it's about 0.75 kilowatt motor so just under horsepower um, I got some tape lock pulleys which just fit on there and then I had a my local machine shop at Maynard's made me this adapter to then take one of the tape lock pulleys. I'm driving it from the back in fourth gear um, really because I didn't feel comfortable putting a pulley. I could have put a pulley on the nose here 
but then I'd have had to really support that because this obviously is designed to go into the oil light bushing that goes into in the flywheel to support this um, sh input shaft as it goes through a single bearing so without that I'd be having to put a lot of side strain on the uh, on that um, uh, bearing and obviously the gear as well uh, and I just felt that that you know within fourth gear you're straight through drive anyway so it makes no odds whether you drive it from the front or the back so I decided that this was going to be simpler and safer and I've um, done a preliminary test run and it works haven't tried the overdrive yet but um, uh, once I switch this on you won't be able to hear me so what I'm going to do is switch it on let it run for a few seconds make sure everything's running correctly i'm going to leave it in fourth gear um in fact what i'll do is i'll put it in neutral uh, no, i'll leave it in fourth gear put it in fourth gear start it up i've got the power supply here set at 13.5 volts and you can hear a nice solid click when you operate the solenoid so that means that something's working inside that so i'm going to keep an eye on the gauge and see how that goes obviously i've just filled it up with oil as well shell spirax um and um it might take a few seconds for it to pump up but um just that first time but I'm, it has been run briefly already in fourth gear without doing the overdrive so let's just see how this goes um see if it uh, does what it's supposed to right so you won't hear much from me anyway Okay, so here goes. That's what you're looking for. You can hear it's engaged. The motor's under a little bit more strain. Now when I take it off, you want to see that drop nice and quickly. Brilliant. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the overdrive's working, the pressure's around where it should be at 500 psi. Uh, it goes up quickly and it comes down quickly. So as far as I can tell, that's all good. So I'm gonna run it for a while, um, just to make sure there aren't any oil leaks, um, but and also get it nice and warm. Uh, it's a little bit warm already from when I previously ran it without turning on the overdrive. So, um, so yeah, just wanna make sure the gearbox is working properly, which I think it is. Uh, obviously I'm not testing it under load but I think it's enough to see that the overdrive is actually kicking in uh, nice and quickly at the right pressure to, to, to feel confident that it's all going to work when it's in the car. Thank you very much. Okay so this is after about half an hour of running. I've increased the size of the pulley that's brought the revs up to about 2200 rpm at the back. The overdrive's still in it's been at uh, 500 psi consistently throughout slightly higher when the end oil was a bit cooler um, gearbox sounds nice no horrible noises touch wood so yeah it's working well i'm just really letting it run now so i can check for oil leaks but it's been running now for nearly half an hour and uh, it's nice and hot you know the oil's nice and warm so no sign of any oil leaks so i think the uh the job is done.